Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 53 of the Nope Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. I have a special guest today, Joanna Lindenbaum, and we're going to be talking about energetics and the ability to listen. And whether or not you are a coach or have a coaching business, the ability to listen is something that I think many of us underestimate. And I was just telling Joanna before we hit record, I watched the new Little Mermaid movie recently. And uh, it's not a big spoiler, so you don't have to turn it off if you haven't seen it. But at the end of the movie, King Triton says to Ariel something along the lines of, I'm sorry you had to lose your voice for me to be able to hear you. And I found that line so moving because early on she's saying, Daddy, I'm not happy. I want to do this. And he's just completely disregarding and not listening to her at all. And then, you know, she signs the deal with the sea witch and goes through this whole thing. And in her not being able to speak at all is when she's actually heard. So, Joanna, welcome to the show. And I'm keen to hear your wisdom on this. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. So do you want me to just jump in? I want you to jump in. I'm ready. I should have pen and paper. I'm looking forward to listening to this back because you're very, every time you speak, I take something away. (laughs) Yeah. So I love even just that example that you gave from the little mermaid. And it speaks so much to the, you know, to so many of our relationships. And of course, if you're a coach, you have a relationship with each of your clients. And, um, you know, what oftentimes can happen when we are coaches, therapists, practitioners, working with another individual, as an aside, this also happens for parents, for any parents. (laughs) Also, I, I often liken coaching to parenting, but what can oftentimes happen is if we as the practitioner or the parent or really any individual in the relationship, if we are not in a place where we are grounded, where our nervous systems are grounded, where we're feeling regulated, if we as practitioners aren't in a place where we understand that the person we're listening to, our client, and also our kid, if it's parenting, are on the same plane as us, that we are no higher and no lower than that other person, right? Because oftentimes what happens, unfortunately, in coaching, even when we know better, is that we become the expert and then we're on this higher pedestal than the client, Um, we want to remember that it's an equal playing field. So as a practitioner, if we're not regulated and if we are not on that equal playing field, what happens is we stop really hearing what our clients are saying. And instead, we're focusing on am I good enough? Am I doing this right? Are they good enough? Are they going to be able to reach their goals that they're working on to, you know, with me together? Are we going to get stuck? What, you know, we, we get into our heads of all of these worries about things. And then what's happening? We're focusing on ourselves versus focusing on our clients. And when we're focusing then on ourselves and our own performance or our fear that our client isn't going to perform well, we, we are no longer part of the conversation. We're, we're not there anymore. We're not present anymore. We've gone somewhere else. So that's one, just such an important piece around presence in our client conversations, if we need to be grounded and we need to be approaching with this understanding that everybody in this relationship, both me and my client are good enough, are whole and complete as we are. And we need to believe that this coming together of us and our client, there's everything is between us and our client, everything is included for us to create the solutions that the client needs. We're not missing anything. Um, So that's number one. But then here's the other piece. If we come to these client relationships 
with this feeling of I'm not good enough. I practitioner, I'm not good enough, or my client isn't good enough, or I'm scared. My client is going to get angry at me if I say this or make X suggestion or ask X question, or if we come, I call this energetics, right? So if we come with misaligned energetics, uh, sometimes misaligned energetics can sound like, um, you know, I'm scared I'm not gonna look smart enough if I don't know how to respond to their issue, right? So any of this stuff, if we come with misalign a misaligned energetic, which is essentially a misaligned belief or a fear, energy follows energy. And what that means is if I believe that my client isn't responsible enough to make their goal happen, energy follows energy, the client in one way or another is going to believe that as well. If I come to the container with the client with the energetic of I'm really scared that I'm going to say something that's going to make the client angry, energy follows energy, that the client is going to feel that I am holding back, that there's that there is some kind of fear happening for me. Um, and then back to that great example with the little mermaid, if I come to a client conversation with an energetic of, I know better for my client, what is good for them than they know for themselves, then I'm not going to be able to hear what they're actually saying and what they need. And they may ultimately not even feel like they know energy follows energy. I love that. And I love how you talk about um, in your containers and trainings, you know, checking your filters because as part of it too, like what's your preconceived idea or what bias or what privilege or what do you hold? Because I think sometimes um, people don't hear each other because they've fixed on this is the question that they're asking or this is the only way to do this. And that's why we can have a mismatch conversation because, and I loved how you bring it to parenting too, because I can think of times where I'm really absent. Like I'm thinking about, oh, I need to, you know, pay for that school excursion or sign that waiver or like I'm fully <laughs> not in whatever. And one of my kids comes on, mom, can I do this? And absently I'll just say, yeah, whatever. And then like, Whoa! they run off excitedly. And then I catch myself in the moment. It's like, what did I just say yes to? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Or another great parenting example is if we're scared of how our kids are going to respond to certain things, to certain requests we make, or certain inquiries we make, or certain rules in the, you know, whatever it is, if we're scared of that, they're going to feel, first of all, they, they can smell that fear right away. And then they know how to leverage it. Um, but then we're going to hold back on actually doing what we need to do as responsible parents with our children, um, or we may end up not hearing them, et cetera. But yeah, that this filter thing is so important. Um, you know, we can never really listen to another human being and really hear what they are saying if we aren't aware of all of our own beliefs that we're bringing to the conversation. Um, and all of our beliefs are our filters. So, you know, for example, if we think, let's say we have a belief, a, fil a, a belief or a filter that is unchecked, for example, let's say we believe that the only way to be healthy is to weigh a certain amount. Um, if we come into a coaching conversation, not checking that belief, we're not going to be able to really hear our client's situation, what they're up against, what their obstacles are and what the right goals for them actually are. I think that's such a great example because I used to weigh twice what I do now. And I've done a lot of coaching with people around their weight when they go to see a medical practitioner, and I've had this experience too, like I've got a rip roaring earache. I think I have an ear infection and I go in there and I get this whole lecture about my weight and my health and how important this is and all this sort of stuff. And I can remember more than one time 
like sitting through that and just being like, you know, and then getting to the end and then trying to push me out the door. I'm like, can you look at my ear, please? Like you haven't actually addressed why I came here in the first place because you've taken one look at an appearance and taken this whole conversation on a different trajectory. Not to say that this thing, you know, isn't important or, you know, can be addressed, but what did the person come to you for? And that's another thing we were talking about before we hit record. I was saying to you, I had a friend who had a coaching experience and she's like, she hasn't really experienced coaching before and we're friends. And she's like, I don't understand how you do this as a profession. Like she just talked at me and I didn't feel heard or that we covered what I went to. She goes, so like, what is this whole coaching thing? Which is what prompted me to reach out to you to speak about, you know, energetics. Cause it's not just rapport, like, you know, establishing rapport and whatever it's really hearing what are they asking? And then asking clarifying questions. And maybe that could be another episode because sometimes someone gives you the information, you run it through your filter. And that's why I love so much about running my business globally online. Uh, Australianisms and USisms and Canadianisms, like sometimes we're talking about a whole different thing and one of us will say something and then everyone will start laughing because we have different meanings for things. And that is such a broad example, but everyday things like, like I have no time. If you're just like, all well, okay. And you don't explore that, like, what does that mean? Um, and then, cause sometimes people get really affronted when you ask questions. I think it's so funny growing up, I was always told off for asking questions and now it's my profession. <laughs> <laughs> you just you use that superpower you've leveraged into a profession. It's so true. No, and we can't. So there's I love what you're sharing, and there's a, a couple of pieces in in there that I want to pull out that are so important. So number one, as practitioners, we will never know the right or the breakthrough questions to ask if we're not first listening. All amazing questions are predicated on how well we're listening. And as we've already spoken about, how well we're listening has everything to do with the beliefs and the energetics that we as the practitioners are bringing to the conversation and then checking, making sure that we're aware of, right? So that that's number one. So anytime I have practitioners that come to me and say like, I don't know how to craft a great coaching question, you know, I never know what to ask a client. We, I don't go straight into teaching about different types of questions. Like the first place we look at is, well, what are you listening? How, what are you hearing? How are you listening? And also what energy are you bringing to all of that? So that's one piece. And then the other piece I wanted to pull out of what you said, and I know, you know, because you've been through my training, Suzanne, um, you've heard me say this before, but one of the most powerful types of questions that we can ask that most practitioners just skip over because they think it's a waste of time, but it actually can open up so much is what I call definition questions. And, and those things, it doesn't, yes, for sure, if people are in different countries or parts of the world, but even if you're from the same hometown with, you know, coming from similar social institutions and all of that, you know, for example, if somebody, if a client says to you, well, I want to be successful, don't make any assumptions about what success means for them. Ask them to define success. If a client comes to you and says, I want to be healthy, don't make any assumptions about what health means to that individual. Ask them to define health for themselves. If somebody comes to you and says, I want to be in an amazing marriage, in an amazing marriage, don't make any assumptions about what that means. Ask them to define that first. The definition will not only help you as the coach bring you onto the same page as your client, but it'll help create a ton of awareness for your client as well. I love that. Thank you so much, Joanna. We're, we're at time. So for this episode, where can people find you if they're like, oh my goodness, I need to know more of your brilliance? <laughs> Uh, they can go, thank you for asking. They can go to my website, which is applieddepthinstitute.com. It's A-P-P-L-I-E-D-D-E-P-T-H institute.com. It's kind of long. And you can not only, you can read my blog there, you can sign up for my newsletter and you can grab a couple of different free gifts. I've got a gift on how to work with shadow, how to support clients through resistance and lots of other goodies there. 
Oh, Joanna's website is a wealth of information. Highly recommended. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you everyone for listening. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.